hello uh, good evening to all uh, uh, certain disclaimer before starting this video because today i will be going to discuss about uh, bachelor of law llb degree from faculty of law university of delhi is based on uh, my personal experiences because i have completed the degree of llb in 2013 to 16 academic year in delhi university so just for benefit of our colleagues who had just entered into the llb degree course in delhi university this video will be useful so i will like to highlight particularly faculty of law delhi university based on my personal experiences um, what all i learned and uh, what is the structure and other thing so it's not official video from the university it's my personal video i am alumni of faculty of law delhi university so <laughs> bachelor of laws llb degree from delhi university which has 30 papers because is after graduation or post graduation one enters into three year llb which like a law course in delhi university as you know delhi university has three centers faculty of law has under them law center one law center two campus law center there are three centers of rational and the structure is uh, as i said that because there are 30 papers 30 30 papers are there so uh, there is 3 years of degree course that mean uh, semester systems we are following that mean 6 uh, into 5 I mean to say five subjects per semester one has to read and in the first semester because there are compulsory subjects like elements of the legal system principle of contract that's called general principles we uh, study and there is law of torts uh, law of crimes uh, especially indian penal code we study there and there is family law one in first semester so i am talking about uh, my batch 2013 to 16 so now if there is a change uh, in the syllabus or the subjects wise i uh, like uh, like uh, advise you to read the latest one because bar council of india and other body has uh, power to change and suggest change as per the need of the okay so in element of indian legal system to say briefly uh, we will be studying about indian legal system so as you know indian legal system something about constitution of india something about uh, the legal system but said uh, there is a article 39a of the constitution which says free legal aid so uh, parliament of india has enacted legal services authority act of 1987 so there are uh, various bodies are there permanent lok adalat okay and so state legal services authority dslsc and there is national legal services authority so that all uh, element of indian legal system like public interest litigation how it came into effect and these all one has to study uh, we have to understand that uh, indian legal system what is composed of and another is principle of contract so uh, indian contract act so what various kind of what is agreement okay uh, what is agreement and how it is different from the contract and uh, this whole thing uh, will be part of indian contract act i will not go into detail because it written now and there is something called law of tort means civil law tort means civil law. so uh, there are certain wrongs which are not uh, criminal per se they are civil wrong the remedy lies in common law okay the uh, court precedent and some specific relief acts and other thing so another is law of crime in indian penal code so uh, law of crime because this law of crime subject um, as i studied so that ipc only with reference to indian penal code we were studying in first semester and family law one the okay, family law one as you say uh, this uh, family law we have to study so every like personal laws because personal laws are governing the field but if you uh, are hindu like hindu marriage act is there if, uh, like the muslim has their own personal laws governing the field then 
Christian also had their own uh, law governing the field. So uh, mainly we will be studying about Hindu and Muslim and what all all the law, okay, with regard to family. Then this first semester five subjects, and if one comes to second semester, this law of evidence. Uh, as you know that we, we have Indian Evidence Act, so we are uh, like talking about Indian system. So in Indian system, Indian Evidence Act, we have to uh, read in detail. Uh, detail is to say like you know, what are the definitions like what is what is definitions given in indian evidence act like uh, what is fact what is fact and issue uh, what is relevant fact what is about admissibility in, uh, of the, the evidence what are all other what is the dying declaration these are like nitty gritties of the evidence act we have to study in that and family law too you know, because uh, the uh, the Field of family law is right. not only the with regard to marriage. We have to study about the adoption. Okay, what is the succession? Uh, and then uh, property has to be divided. How? What is the co-partnery? What is the karta? And what is the uh, uh, rights of the Hindu uh, uh, like uh, to inherit the property and other? So it will be a detail-based family law. Two will come, and criminal law two will be a general principle of criminal law. What is the due process and procedure established by law and other thing and there is a criminal procedure code of 1973 so many of the provision in the criminal law too we will be covering in first second semester and that time as i telling this focused on uh, my time what i have studied so property law in so uh, there is a law governing property okay. property laws the indian law we will be studying property law like transfer of property act. So with regard to that, public international law that's called law of peace. Okay, so it has one, two. So during uh, like if you need that, so you can have two also with regard to that. And uh, this is second semester, uh, that time actually. third semester constitutional law one because the, there's something called constitution of India, and uh, constitutional law is wider than that. So there are various principles in the constitution. So uh, we'll be studying that. Okay, what is the fundamental right? What's the fundamental duties? And there is a concept of the basic structure of the constitution. So, so material has in details. So I will be just briefly talking about there is uh, something called limitation and arbitration subject. That the limitation act is there. Now every suit, civil suit, uh, has that uh, law of limitations. So when can we file? So limitation act. Also, for the arbitration, because in you know, section 89 of the uh, Code of Civil Procedure of 1908, involves for the settlement of the dispute, uh, that arbitration, conciliation uh, can be referred. Okay, so we have Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996, and uh, there are with regard to uh, with regard to that um, the other subject like business association is there like partnership, law of partnership, there is agency is created, okay, so the partnership act, we have to study in that, after that there is a labor law, if you are interested, now it's mandatory, okay? so uh, labor law, we can add on, so what is there in labor law, like industrial protect of 1947, so there, uh, so various aspects, what is industry, so uh, one has to study this all uh, during that labor law, no. There is Trade Union Act of 1926. So one has to go through this uh, detail wise. Then there is a private international law. So I said it, one is a public international law, another is a private international law, like uh, certain provision with regard to like marriage. Uh, then. So marriage also will go to international ramification. Law. So detail wise, as I said, I'm not going in that. So uh, there is third semester. Fourth standard, uh, fourth semester wise is we uh, like constitutional law too will fall. Then there is administrative law because uh, all administrative tribunal which are functioning has some kind of administrative law has to follow like principle of natural justice. So one has to follow principle of natural justice. So we'll read in that paper. Uh, so what is uh, like 
the administrative discretion, how it can be used, what is the delegated legislation, and while uh, like framing any uh, like any kind of administrative law or the body while acting, so how they can actually uh, follow that what is or the ultimate part. No one can be punished and hurt. There is something called uh, the like uh, no one can be judged against his own cause. So uh, if some forum is giving some kind of judgment, so it has to be some reason. Okay, reason has to be given to every judgment. So an opportunity of hearing that I have said or the ultimate part. And so that all are part of this uh, in that administrative law. Then there is called business association too in fourth semester at that, that time. It's called company law. Uh, as you know that in Indian companies, you no know, law 2013 is effective now. 1956 was the uh, amended. So uh, there are many provisions in the Companies Act, so, which are very important. So we have to study in this semester uh, what what is company, okay? What is uh, how companies form now one man company. Uh, there are many officers are created like national company or tribunals. So uh, this all will come. There are SFIOs are there, serious fraud investigation officer and other body created. So one has to study that. Then as I have chosen labor law too, so uh, labor law also will go in detail. So wages act, payment of wages act, employee compensation act. So there will be case laws. Um, what is uh, like Supreme Court's? Uh, like verdict on employee compensation what is like sexual harassment prevention in the workplace that that all will be part of labor law because the Visakha judgment Visakha was a state of uh, state and then Supreme Court judgment was their guideline for sexual uh, harassment prevention in the workplace with uh, by honorable Supreme Court so after that we have this 2013 act also sexual harassment prevention act in the workplace so that all will form a part of uh, that uh, uh, say labor law too and the criminology is one of uh, you can adopt uh, like you can take criminology so criminology as i said is a science of crime actually what is crime the basic thing actors yes men serious and uh, there are different theories are theories are there Edwin Sutherland's differential association theory and other theories of the criminal law, as you can, there is something called correctional like reforms and other aspect of like what, uh, theories like retribution theory, deterrence theory of crime, and uh, what is our death penalty? Okay, why? You know, what is the logic? Whether it has to be like banned and or not? So it, it is all part of criminal logic. So. Because his distinct principle and uh, principles are there, which are very important for the law student to understand. And in fifth semester, at that time, the course followed like civil procedure code. The code of civil procedure we have to study as a uh, fifth semester of a subject. Then there was jurisprudence, like prudence, you know, reasonability, like juris science. Okay, law has always reasonability, so that jurisprudence is um, jurisprudence for law. So that we have to study that. Uh, then there is something called business regulations. Okay, whenever the companies are on this thing, so they are regulated. There are regulatory mechanisms, like you say, telecom industry, if you go, there is telecom regulatory authority of India. So if you go to insurance sector, what are insurance uh, in, in, insurance regulatory development authority, IRDA is there. So uh, reading about those kind of business regulatory frameworks in India and also the state has power, like one can run the industry, it is uh, article 191G giving uh, people power to actually profess any trade occupation, but uh, in the reasonable restrictions as uh, article 19 in subject to so the business wise also the uh, so certain kind of trades and occupations can be regulated example if the advocates are there advocates are enrolled under advocates act of 1961 
So in the interval, so what will happen? So there is a bar council of India to regulate the practices of advocates and conduct and every disciplinary and other. So in detail, advocate acts give. So that kind of state has power. So here bar council of India because it is statutory body. So under the statute, I mean advocate act, they have a power to regulate the profession of advocates. So registration, everything is there. So that way we have to study in that paper uh, about those kind of regulatory mechanism. For example, I have used this advocate act. Same way, every business or profession has to be regulated and there are certain frameworks. So we have to study that. And also one of the paper is like rent control and salon clearance. You, you, you know because uh, rent is because many people cannot afford the housing and other things. So uh, they have to take in some agreement between the tenant and the landlord uh, has to be there so they can stay. So there is something called rent control. So and, and rent control and slum clearance. So there is also slum clearance policy in there. So uh, many games are happening. So people's slums has to be cleared and, and they have to be rehabilitated and all this. So the case laws by Honorable Supreme Court and the High Courts and what is the law of the land we have to understand in this paper. And there is another paper I have ordered, uh, opt opted because I said I, sp I will be specifically giving example from my uh, personal experiences of environmental law. So uh, you all know Environmental Protection Act in India is there. So we will study various principles like precautionary principles are there. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there are certain uh, principles called um, so, precautionary principle is more of proactively the Environment Act gives power to the agencies of doing in environmental impact assessment and other things, feasibility study, another thing. So, one is of precautionary principle, another is uh, like prohibitory. Then, uh, if the pollution is actually caused, then there are mechanisms, as you know, like national green tribunals are there. So, uh, environmental bodies are there under the Environmental Protection Act of 1986. So that all we'll study in this. Uh, and I'm uh, going to uh, next part, we say six semester, which is final followed that time. So very important part, like semester six was having professional ethics, pleading, convincing, and mood codes. So it's more of practical plus uh, theoretical subject, professional ethics we know, like every profession because advocates are professionals recognized by the Advocates Act and also Article 19.1, Clause G, Subclause G of 19, Clause 1 of the Constitution of India gives their right to practice the profession of advocates and Bar Council of India has been empowered as a regulatory body. So there are certain ethics under the Advocate Acts and framed by the certain statutory uh, bar council and state bar councils so which are binding because we are professionals so also there is a pleading also like you know, whenever presenting our case before the courts there are certain pleading convincing drafting okay these all issues are there which are necessary to learn for any advocates or to be advocate and the moot court, you know, moot court is a practical exposure before going to the courtroom, creating the courtroom scenario within the law campuses, asking some of the people who are like uh, in positions, they are advocates, they are honorable judges of some of the court who are agreeing to like empower uh, law students, and they will become part of learning, teaching actually to the law student. So there will be some mood court. So the first is mood court learning, orientation, and other thing. Then part of that, organizing some of the mood court competition, participating in that, and learning for the concept of voting. Okay, uh, arguing for the respondent or the petitioner or in hypothetical cases, so that before going as a full fledged advocate, one has sufficient exposure to face the practical situation environment of courtroom and also there is a jurisprudence to paper 
and after that minor x and some rules of supreme court these are their minor acts they said no stamp act uh, because whenever we file any civil suit there will be stamps uh, we have to affix court fees we have to affix so that there are specific rules are there so we have to read that all what are there what is the honorable supreme court of india's rules with regard to fixation of that kind of stamp court and other thing okay so one paper is that another paper interpretation of statues so you know any of the statue there is something called question of fact and there is something called question of law so when the question of law the interpretation of the law comes so only the higher courts are empowered like honorable high courts and non honorable supreme courts are empowered to decide in that substantial question of law in any litigation if it comes then what happens the principle has to apply by them what is called interpretation of statute there is something called harmonious construction when two statues which both are necessary but their provision is contradicting between themselves or it appears or during any process or any case it brought to the notice of the honorable court that this is like question of interpretation so they will do the harmonious construction that mean uh, without violating one whether we can keep both okay or suggest some of the change like without like article 13 is there in uh, constitution of india so laws are defined so to the extent of they are invalid so uh, not quashing the whole act or the um, uh, provision per se some of the sections some amendment can be done to save both because the objective you have to see by what objective it was enacted if both statue has some same objective so harmoniously we have to keep the both and whatever the small correction is there amendment is there by virtue of the exercise of the honorable court's power court can do it. so this we study interpretation of statue what are the, the principle of general specialty and what is the harmonious construction i said um, okay so another the last uh, in that format we were having in 2013 to 16 was was negotiable instrument banking and insurance one subject so negotiable instrument as you said like negotiable instrument act there like checks are negotiable instrument so these are the acts governing the area and also there is a banking sector so banking regulations are there because uh, reserve bank of india and uh, all banks are under, under that ombudsman scheme is there in banking so banking regulations are there so all this we have to study in this book and insurance also you know because there are insurance regulatory authorities there is a concept of insurance because it's connected with the law of contract also because insurance is for public so if public is there what kind of contract it is so we can we can say that although 30 subject is there in the llb completion but all subjects are somehow related to each other so because law faculty is not about all about subject and having necessary percentage of attendance and other thing there are other things also because other thing i want to say there is legal services authority act of 1987 which creates that every person uh, who is deserving under section 12 of the act should get free legal aid and uh, let me tell you that there are mechanisms are there like national law, uh, legal services authority act, uh, authority is there at the national level and there is a state level also uh, state legal services authorities act are there whose pattern in chief are honorable chief justices of that court and uh, who are instrumental in creating awareness among the people uh, uh, and also giving legal aid and advice so there is a very good like opportunity in the law for college opportunity is like a national cadet course ncc or national service scheme nss uh, there is something called legal services society lss so there are a legal uh, uh, so paralegal volunteer scheme they are trained by the state legal services authority who are working under the administrative control of the honorable high courts 
so they will be training the person like law student as a paralegal volunteer if they are you become paralegal volunteer they will be certified and if they are certified then they will be assigned some of the duties in the front office or prison visits or there are certain community trees also the person like the plvs can go and visit and bring such cases from the community for legal aid to the attention of the system so that uh, free legal aid and advice is as a constitutional right under article 39 capital a is given to everyone so there is a scope that um, the law student can become paralegal volunteer there is also a concept of running the clinics legal aid clinics because a full time basis uh, one university is able to run that legal aid clinic it is also more creating of the uh, responsibility like law faculty or the institution for that case has a responsibility to work the society of providing justice to the needy and marginalized people in the legal so legal state legal services authority are helping the law school to run those kind of clinic and there is a concept of uh, faculty convener is convener is there who undertakes such activities which are needed for creating legal awareness like mega outreach uh, um, activities are there like it is planned with the paralegal volunteer faculty going to the community visiting the house and uh, meeting people asking them about any issues specific issues like which they need help if uh, the issue is of genuine and the person also deserves so giving them legal aid bringing them to the legal aid clinic and in the legal aid clinic there are panel lawyer out there as i said the legal services authority act 1987 has a panel of lawyer like legal state legal services authority has panel of lawyer for every uh, forum like juvenile justice board you say child welfare committee you said or uh, district prisons you say uh, or um, for every district level district legal services authority act uh, sorry authorities so they have a right uh, robust mechanism is they are in their panel lawyer are there so on the basis of location of your faculty also the uh, impaneled lawyer can be like duty can be assigned by the honorable legal state legal services authority then the people of the community can come and seek advice legal aid wherever necessary they can institute their case just because they are not having well law or the resources they cannot be deprived from taking legal help so that way student also get opportunity to do be become student convener of the legal services society they, they can be co convener their post are created for voluntary basis and not impacting their study but creating value also there are some treasurer and members of okay. so that all is the what law student can learn and contribute for the society uh, rest specific we will be dealing but that what insight i have like uh, law student in the law faculty can create those all opportunity for the people also because your learning or my learning has to be society's need or in develop so we have to serve a society so, so that way while completing the degree also we can on some of the like, skills to how to work with this so i think that we can take